Uh, we wanted to just briefly go through what our team has done uh, to present the 2023 executive budget. As a reminder to folks, once the executive budget is, uh, has been passed, it then will go to the city council. Uh, the city council will then start to conduct budget hearings uh, and will conclude with a final budget, uh, which will be subject to any type of uh, review or veto from my office until we finalize everything uh, and have a completed budget before tax time happens at the beginning of January. So we're very excited. Uh, this should be a, a fairly short budget session uh, today, but we want to walk you through some of the highlights. Uh, we will have on our city website uh, the full presentation, the budget, uh, as well as a summary uh, for you. Uh, it's jamestowny.gov, uh, where any members of the public or others can take a look and see the budget's going back all the way to 2021. So um, with that, we'll go ahead and get started. Get the next slide for me, please. I just want to first off thank our budget team here at uh, City Hall. Um, it includes uh, Jennifer Williams, our clerk treasurer, as well as John Selstrom, our new comptroller, uh, who unfortunately got thrown into this very quickly, uh, right at the start of budget time. Uh, we also want to welcome aboard Catherine Maycock, who is our deputy comptroller, uh, and Zach Altschuler, who is my executive assistant. Uh, next slide. So there's a lot that goes into making the budget. I appreciate all of the work that not only our departments, uh, but our budget team has done to put this uh, together. But I want to highlight just a few items that are going to be coming out of this budget this year. Uh, number one, we have continued strong growth in property values, which we'll talk about briefly. We're seeing a huge savings in health care. We'll also talk about why that is happening. Uh, I am pleased to announce that the executive budget proposes no tax rate increase. So it stays flat uh, for the second year in a row. Uh, we're pleased to note that all of our union contracts in the city of Jamestown have been settled, which provides some consistency for the next several years in budgeting. Uh, when we took over, we were almost six years behind in some of our union contracts. And I'm also pleased to announce uh, for the first time since the comptroller has released it, we received a no fiscal stress score from the New York State comptroller, which is a huge undertaking since we've been on the uh, stressed city list for quite some years. Next slide, please. So I wanna briefly go over our projected uh, revenues. Uh, we have a bit of a, a increase in our revenues uh, this year. Uh, the majority of the uh, funds will be uh, under kind of sales tax, then followed by some state aid. Uh, our pilot programs that we typically have each year also then followed by departmental income, real property taxes, which is the majority of our funding uh, here in the city. I will note this budget does include a small use of fund balance. Uh, for those that remember, last year's executive budget included fund balance. Uh, the adopted budget included about $700,000 in fund balance. Uh, this year, we're only appropriating $250,000 uh, in fund balance. So quite a small amount. I'll also just note for uh, the public that uh, we have not actually used fund balance in the last few years. We've been very lucky, although we've allocated it, um, our revenues have exceeded our projections and we have not had to use a fund balance. Next slide. Expenditures. Um, our biggest uh, expenditure typically is our uh, police department. Uh, as well as our uh, public works and fire, then followed by health insurance and other uh, items of note, including employee benefits. I will note that generally our salaries are higher this year, uh, as are most because of contractual um, increases and raises from our unions, uh, but we're also seeing that uh, around, the, around the U.S., right? So as we see inflation and increase in wages, uh, we'll also see those contractual increases as well. Next slide. Uh, retirement contributions may be a bit hard to see. They're generally up slightly, uh, increased in our retirement contributions, both for police and fire, which is a separate retirement fund, and our general New York State employee retirement rates. Uh, we had a pretty low year in terms of costs for retirement last year. Uh, this year we are expecting a bit of a bump given the markets, uh, but nothing that was uh, too outrageous. So that's pretty positive. Next slide. 
Um, one thing that we are very uh, excited, or I guess two things to say we're very excited about, is our constitutional debt limit. Uh, we right now have a debt limit of 29.22%, uh, which means that we have such a strong ability to borrow funds at a favorable rate for larger scale projects. So if we need to do larger scale projects and we do run out of rescue plan funds, uh, we have a very strong position to get a favorable rate uh, because our debt limit is so low. As a reminder, you can only have um, so much of your outstanding debt versus your limit based on your taxing ability. Now continuing onward with some of the revenues, just to talk a bit about sales tax, a strong component of our budget each year. Uh, we are projecting a 5% increase in sales tax from last year. I do want to note that we are already uh, over our budget uh, for sales tax this year. We're on, we're on track uh, to exceed what we expected, which was last year a 2.2% increase. Um, we uh, were uh, fairly conservative with our sales tax numbers. A 5% increase is in line with what counties and other cities across New York are projecting with sales tax. I will note, you may be seeing people buying less these holidays and for many different reasons, but what we are still seeing is that large ticket prices, people are spending more, but buying less. So those sales tax have still remained strong uh, this year. So hopefully we'll continue to see that going into next year. Next slide. Um, our constitutional taxing limit, when we first started back in 2020, we were almost at 100% of our taxable limit, of our constitutional tax limit. Over the last several years, we have worked very hard as a team and as an administration uh, to reduce that, to give us a little breathing room for how much we can tax. Right now, we have a tax levy, uh, our executive tax levy is 87.82% of our taxing power. We have a lot of leeway if we needed to increase taxes uh, to fund other items, um, although uh, we're not looking at that at this point, uh, but we certainly have a strong rise in property values. As folks know, property values uh, have been going up, but there's also the potential for them to go down. So we do wanna watch those things closely, but we have some flexibility uh, for the future. So let's talk a bit about our budget priorities for 2023. Uh, sustainable growth, healthcare savings, no tax increase, and building city capacity. So uh, let's talk a little bit about sustainable growth. This is something that we're really proud of as a team here at City Hall. We're anticipating a 6% rise in assessed value for 2023. That's coming off a 4% increase in 2022 and a 2.8% increase in 2021. That's actually showing us that Jamestown is becoming more of a hot market out there. And it is a really incredible thing to see. Our valuation rates have gone up. Uh, as of right now, when we started back in 2019, 2020, we had a 100% equalization rate. Uh, we will now be down to an 88% equalization rate in 2023. So there's a lot more room to grow. Uh, and a joke I like to make is if we keep going this route, we may be paying less taxes than Lakewood. So they have lakefront property. So we'll see how that, how that looks. Next slide, please. Um, really, really huge this year uh, and into last year was the formation of a healthcare committee made up of retirees and active members, uh, which ultimately decided as a group to move forward on a Medicare Advantage program. From that, we had 160 retirees of over 300 potential retirees move to that program. That program uh, switched them off of the city's insurance plan and onto a separate Medicare plan. Retirees pay zero premium for the first five years on that plan, which has been incredibly successful. No retirees have returned to the traditional plan since they have moved. They do have uh, until next month to do so, uh, but as at this point, uh, no retiree has moved, nor have we heard of any retiree looking to move back. That is over half of our eligible retirees on this plan, um, resulting in a $1.6 million healthcare savings to the city, uh, which we anticipate 
um, and continuing to see some of that savings. Next slide, please. Because of the savings, there will be no changes to the base premiums for our active employees and retirees for the second year in a row. The first year, last year, when we made this change, we anticipated that the costs of healthcare may go up for our active population. We were able to stem that tie by keeping the premiums flat. Uh, next year, we are anticipating no changes to the base premiums. Now keep in mind for our employees and retirees that follow union contracts, there may be a, a different percentage you may have to pay of the premium, but that premium itself is staying the same for next year. We've also seen a 6% decrease in administrative costs with our healthcare uh, provider, uh, Blue Cross, now known as Highmark. And I am proud to announce that because of the savings plan, the work that our employees and our retirees did, New York State Financial Restructuring Board will be providing a $500,000 reimbursement to the city uh, given the um, success of that plan. So we're really excited about the healthcare savings. Next slide. Uh, no tax increase. Our tax rate will be staying the same uh, for next year uh, per $23.69 per $1,000 of assessed value. Again, our tax, uh, constitutional tax margin is currently at 88%, down from 100% just a few years ago. Not a huge increase in the tax levy, only about 0.06%. But here's another reason uh, why we've been able to keep the tax rate the same even given the increased cost in salaries and other contractual items. Because of an agreement we made with Jamestown Community College and the funding of a grant writer, we've been able to secure $7.3 million in grant funding for programs. Jamestown is applying for more grants than ever, helping us to reduce our operating costs and fund new programs. It allows us to increase and continue our services without increasing the tax rate. And with a joint effort with Jamestown Community College, we now have a built-in partner for various programs and items that we together as the city and the college can work on new programs and initiatives for the city. Next slide, please. So let's talk a little bit about building the city's capacity in this budget. We're investing in our workforce uh, in order to grow the potential of our city government. Our budget does include some, a few new hirings for public works, building maintenance, and parks. Not a lot of additional uh, staffing. Uh, certainly we've included other capital programs and projects, but we really looked this year to try to maintain what we have. But we've also added a lot already during the year. We've added new police, we've added new fire, uh, we've added other positions uh, across the year, and we want to use this budget to continue to maintain those new positions. Next slide. I also noted for the first time since the release of the Comptroller's Fiscal Stress Score, Jamestown has been rated no fiscal stress. Score of zero. That does not mean we have not received environmental stress scores. There is a huge uh, uh, score that we've received for poverty and other metrics, but financially the Comptroller has rated us uh, in a fairly good standing at this time. Does allow the city to take on more debt if need to and give us some breathing room to finance bigger projects. We also have a strong fund balance, next slide please, that has grown over the years and we've been uh, proud to work together as a team to make it happen. Our fund balance currently stands at over $7 million, which may seem like a lot, but is actually the minimum amount the city should have in a rainy day fund, just in case anything happens. We've been uh, really excited to be able to grow that fund balance to ensure that if something catastrophic happens, a strong recession, anything of the like, we're able to weather some of that storm. Next slide. Some capital project highlights, improvements to the fire department, including bailout gear, uh, police department equipment, including license plate recognition systems to aid in investigations. We have continued elevated chips and highway funding from the state. We've been proud uh, to have with our public works department through our leadership of uh, Jeff Lehman, 
uh, to uh, have really the most comprehensive road plan that we've had in many, many years. And it's truly been incredible. We've had additional equipment funding and upgrades for our public works and our parks departments. And as we are ever cautious, uh, more IT infrastructure upgrades. It has become uh, ever uh, more and more clear that cybersecurity is the forefront of the work that governments do. And to be able to invest in our IT infrastructure has been a big uh, part of the work we've done as an administration. Next slide. Our capital projects uh, were not as large and in charge this year as they normally are. And that's really because there are still federal dollars on the table that need to be allocated before the end of 2024. We may not have funded large capital projects, but the city has not been lacking in large projects. Uh, we've done, been able to fund it through grant programs. We've been able to fund it through uh, rescue plan funds. Uh, but we do want to remind the public that there is still over $9 million in federal rescue plan funds that is unallocated. It might be allocated in the next couple uh, work sessions of city council, but as of right now, uh, it is not, uh, it's still sitting there. We also have used $4.5 million in rescue plan funds just to invest in capital projects alone in the last year. So a significant chunk of our capital projects uh, have been invested given the federal resources that we've received. And I do want to just remind folks of the different investments that we've made here in the city. Next slide. We've hired four new firefighters. Um, we've allocated money for three new police officers focused on, focused on gun violence and quality of life. We've added a deputy comptroller, grants manager. We've added additional funding for public works employees uh, for snow removal. We've had a record amount of capital projects, neighborhood programs, business investments through the city's rescue plan fund. And to date, 18.9 million of our 28 million have been allocated of rescue plan funds. Next slide. I also want to talk briefly a bit about our record IT investment since we took over in 2020. We've implemented a cybersecurity training and fish testing for all employees. We've upgraded our firewalls and managed threat response to provide 24 seven monitoring for cybersecurity incidents here at the city. We've installed fiber optics to three firehouses, parks department, fleet departments. We've installed mobile command units in our police and fire vehicles. We've installed new world fire software and created electronic charting. We've taken a fire department that was still using carbon copy forms and made them digital. We've updated police body cams. We've implemented multi-factor authentication for all devices connecting to the city's network. And we've substantially reduced our cybersecurity risk across the city network. But we still have more to go. And I do want to uh, put out to the public that we'll be soon rolling out a connected community. What I mean by that is we'll have an emergency alert system uh, that we'll be rolling out uh, this month for members of the public so that they can receive information on parks and recreation, road closures, city news, utility updates, public safety alerts, extreme weather alerts, housing and neighborhood updates. We want to keep the public and all of its residents informed and we'll be able to do that with this connected community idea. Uh, being able to provide rapid information to people that need it, whether it's on their commute or whether there's a large event here in the city uh, that we need to get information quickly to people. Um, I do want to remind folks that today's uh, budget presentation, as well as the budget itself, will be on the city's website, jamestownny.gov. You can go through, you could see the various items that we've proposed and funded under the budget. Going forward, the city council will be preparing uh, its uh, form of the budget. It'll review the executive budget, make any requested changes, uh, and we will go through that process. Um, this year, we're excited uh, to see what 2023 will bring as we continue to rebound uh, from the pandemic. I want to thank you all for joining today. I told you we'd try to make it short and sweet, uh, but we are very excited what the next year has to bring. So thank you all. See if there's any questions from the media. Okay.